to Mr. Chairman for, for, for the introduction. So my talk is about uh, Onetech magnetic tracking device um, used for, uh, uh, for uh, magnetic resonance imaging. <coughs> so I will organize my talk by first presenting the, the, the goal of this project. Then I will show the trivial probe we use uh, to, uh, to measure the magnetic gradient maps in a in uh, uh, magnetic resonance imaging. Then I will discuss the tracking device prototype to design with uh, the, the, the tracking algorithm we use. And I will, I will show you the first experimental results we have about uh, real time tracking of the, of, uh, of this device. And I will conclude. So the context of this project is uh, magnetic resonance imaging and uh, MRI has advantages. The first one is, is that uh, with MRI you have high PC contrast and also it's possible to choose freely the uh, imaging slice. Uh, uh, and finally, perhaps the best interesting thing is that it is a no ionizing imaging uh, technique. So it is expected to be used more and more for minimally invasive surgery. And in this kind of surgery, <coughs> uh, the surgeon, here you have a professor, <coughs> a Chinese professor from Stratford at Sengenji, and he is doing here an intervention. Uh, as you can see, it's like this. And in this kind of surgery, he has to he use some tools like needles, catheters. And he has, of course, to see the, the, the tool uh, the insert inside the body on the screen. And up to now, he asked the assistant, uh, uh, who is outside the, the MRI room, to find the tool by successive images. So it's a very, uh, uh, very simple method. So it would be very interesting for him to have a system um, uh, a small sensor giving it uh, the, the position of the tool inside the, 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 the scanner in order to adjust in real time the image of the tool. So it's what we are doing here thanks to a magnetic localization device. So why a magnetic uh, system? It's because in MRI <coughs> you have first a high static field here B0 which is aligned along the longitudinal axis which is named the Z axis here. And above this, uh, this high static field, which is typically um, 1.5 or 3 tesla for human body scanner, uh, you have also in an MRI scanner, you have three coils <coughs> which are used to change the magnitude of this uh, BZ field um, along the different axis of the scanner. So you have, if you, if you apply a, a gradient, uh, thanks to the GX gradient coil, then you, you will have a change of the magnitude of the BZ field uh, along X. Now, if you use the GY call, it will be along the Y axis and uh, with the GZ call along the Z axis. But uh, this is the theory, but of course, as you know, uh, the magnetic field is conservative, so we have divergence of P, which is zero. So it means that it's impossible to have a change in the magnitude of the magnetic field. Uh, 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 with a uh, magnetic field perfectly aligned along the z-axis. So it means that you will have always a widening of the magnetic line when you apply a gradient. But it's not a problem, it's even an advantage for us, because in this case, uh, in addition to this uh, change in the bz field, you have two other components which are named the concomitant field. So it means that uh, these gradients, for each gradient, um, you have this uh, matrix, this linear reaction sheet in the center of the, of the scanner. And outside, it is not linear, but it, it's, not, it's not a problem. So it means that the, 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 this gradient stands for its uh, graduation of the space. So if you apply a GX gradient and you measure these three small components, then you do the same with the GY gradient and the same with the GZ gradient. You have nine measurements, and it's conditioned that from these nine measurements, you can determine the position, the localization of the curve 
and uh, its orientation. So uh, to measure this, uh, this, uh, this small magnetic field, we use a 3D old probe. I presented the chip uh, last year in 510 in my uh, sensors. So I just uh, show the chip here. It, it, the, 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 the sensor is a 3D old probe, or uh, uh, 3D old device, which is very small as you can see here. So I think it, I remember that it is located here on the basic here. And we have three amplifying channels. Uh, all this uh, system was designed in uh, standard CMOS technology. I discussed this morning the noise in, in this kind of, uh, in this uh, type of uh, sensor. And, uh, the, so this, uh, this probe was designed in, uh, uh, 0.25 micrometer CMOS technology, so it's standard. This, this chip removed the V0 field since we only measured the, the, the small component added by the gradient and the gradients are applied during one millisecond. So it means that each one millisecond after the application of a gradient, we have a measurement of the three components here. And the chip is also compatible with uh, 1.5 or 3 Tesla uh, magnetic scanner. So last, last year I also shown that we were able to measure the magnetic map when we apply a gradient. So to do to to measure this map, we use this uh, setup with some uh, plastic Legos, which are uh, MRI compatible. Since it's uh, plastic, and uh, in order to locate accurately the, the the probe inside the the, the the scanner, and we get you see here, you see, for instance, for G Z gradient apply the map we get, and it's in, in the center, it is, uh, it, it, it uh, agrees very well with, uh, with the theory, and outside, you know, outside, you, you have seen that uh, we have the right meaning of the, of the lines. So, you have the same kinds of measurement for G X and a G Y project. So now, what, what it is new is that we built a tracking device uh, featuring two old probes. So you see here the thinking circuit box. So the, the probes output uh, an analog signal. So we have the conversion and also the transmission of the, the signal to optical links uh, made externally on the, on the, on the thinking circuit board here. Uh, so here it's the, the, the final expected uh, package or this first version of the, of the prototype. But to characterize, to, to calibrate it, we, we use uh, another system here where the, the, the printed circuit board was placed on a plastic Lego. And also we add two passive markers made of um, small um, uh, capsules here with, with gadolinium, which is a contrast agent in NRI, and a coil to enhance the, the, the artifact on the image. So actually we have two uh, sensors because at the beginning we thought that we will need two sensors to uh, calculate the position, but in fact we found an algorithm uh, with, uh, which needs only one sensor. So this algorithm is here now. You have two unknowns, the position or, uh, you, you are looking for, which is expressed by x, y, and z in the NRI frame, and the, its orientation, which is given by the rotation matrix x of the 3D device, expressed in the NRI frame. So now what we know is the gradient map. So this gradient map of course has been measured. So we know the gradient map. Uh, it means that for a GX gradient we know the 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 the, the, y, the Z, uh, field. For G Y the same, for Z the same. And we measure with this 3D old probe uh, which is rotated with respect to the NRI frame. We measure the, 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 the small components here, so the measurement for G, the G, Y, the G. And the algorithm works in three steps. The first one, we use the property that the magnitude of the field vector we measure is independent of the rotation. So because of the cylindrical symmetry of the system, it uh, limits your possibility to eight possible positions. And these eight positions are found by minimizing this, uh, this magnitude function. Now in the second step, we use 
the property that the dot product of two vectors is also independent of r, so it, in, it uh, allows you to determine the sign of x1, y, z, and z6. And from a, you limit your, possib your possible position to two positions, which are symmetrical about the center of the, of the, of the scanner. And you get this uh, two po possible position by minimizing this uh, dot function. And finally, in the third step, we calculate the orientation for these two points. So this orientation can be calculated. The rotation matrix can be calculated like this. We we uh, yes, we measure all these components and we know the map. And for a rot rotation matrix, the determinant of the matrix is x one is one, and there is only <coughs> one of uh, both uh, uh, calculation which will give you a uh, determinant of one. So at the end, you have the position and the orientation of the 3 d uh, It doesn't work, this uh, calculation in the plane Z equals to zero, but it's not a problem because if we are able to measure V0, then we can uh, uh, solve this issue. Uh, and uh, since we measure this V0 to remove it in the chip, uh, it's, uh, we are just to output the, 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 the the signal. It will be done in the next protocol. So now, in this first experiment, we just limited our uh, experiment in the central area where the gradients are, are linear. We have measured, thanks to the uh, device, the tracking device, the uh, magnetic gradient, gradient map. And when we, when you remove the different offsets, because you have also an uh, orange on offset of the output of these channels, you get this matrix, which is uh, very uh, close to the uh, theoretical matrix when the system is perfectly cylindrical. So it means that our scanner is uh, has a good uh, cylindrical symmetry. And then, thanks to this setup, we put in uh, on in two in the thirty-two different positions the localization device and in three possible orientation because it's very difficult to. to <laughs> To, to put in uh, another orientation than 0 or 90 degrees, and we determine the uh, accuracy of the position and the orientation. So it seems not very good, but these, these uh, measurements should be take, taken with, um, with caution, because as, as you can see on the device, <laughs> okay, the device yes, uh, is, is, is uh, protected by a glove top. And it was very, uh, very difficult to know if the, the, the position, uh, to, to, to determine the exact position where was the, the sensor. So, okay. And also we know that in our chip, we have a, uh, an integrator with a two low open loop gate, uh, leading to a signal dependent offset. So we know that it's, uh, we have to improve the chip. And to find a better experimental setup to know where we put exactly our sensor. But if, if we look only at the noise, at the output noise of the sensor, so the signal to noise ratio of the output, we know that we should get a 7 millimeter localization, which is uh, the, 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 the target of our problem. And, but now we were able to make a, a real time checking. So as you can see here, it was done last week. You, 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 you can see that the, our colleague here is moving slowly the, the, the device, and you see both markers here on the image. And at the end, so here she is doing slowly the, the, the movement. The, the video is accelerated by 50%. And after she will try to have a very fast movement, and you will see that we keep the image of, on both. Uh, on both we keep both uh, markers on the image, so it means that we track the, the, the device. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, these results are very encouraging. All these measurements were made with gradient of only 20 tesla per meter, and but we know that it's possible to apply uh, twice this value, so it means that we will have a better signal for a better signal, uh, signal to noise ratio, and with uh, the improvement of the chip. I'm convinced that we will get the 10 millimeter localization in one shot, so it means in 3 milliseconds because each gradient uh, 
the duration of one year. So um, I hope that once, very soon it will be possible to uh, put this kind of device inside the cathedral. And, uh, we are looking for companies interested in, uh, in this realization of this kind of device. So thank you for your attention.